Hey everybody, this is John Aiken from Web Canopy Studio. I've been trying to find a way to connect with people regularly as I've grown my business to get together and talk about what's going on in the world of marketing and HubSpot and trends in technology. So I decided to just start scheduling virtual coffees with uh, my friends and my contacts that I haven't spoken with in a while. And we decided to film it. So that's what we're doing today with this podcast. Let's see who our guest is today. Hi everyone, I am Jeffrey Vostel. I am a uh, senior manager of product marketing here at HubSpot. Awesome, how, how long have you been with HubSpot? I've been with HubSpot just about four years at this point. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I honestly have loved every minute of it. When I, when I joined, we were um, uh, just about to hit our kind of IPO. Yeah. And I've seen uh, and experienced, of course, the, the company growing tremendously. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I've honestly never enjoyed what I'm doing more so than, than I have here. So, Cool. Awesome. So, Jeffrey, I think it'd be cool maybe to kind of, let's get started and talk a little bit about some of the updates in the design manager. Yeah. Um, I know my dev team is like chomping at the bit. They've been all over it, um, playing with it, making new templates. Um, we're really heavy in the marketplace. So there's the new yeah. release with the modules and things. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. What's, yeah. um, so what, what, what specifically was like the, the first thing that had, uh, that was, I guess, sparking the whole thing. Like why was, was it decided to, 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 to jump into these new changes and things? Yeah, it's a great question, John. So like when we originally built the, uh, original design manager, uh, we were trying to serve like really two audiences. We were trying to serve uh, kind of marketers on one end of the spectrum and, mm -hmm. and developers on the other end of the spectrum. Um, and I would say we kind of landed somewhere in the middle with the orig original design manager, okay. uh, which which ultimately, you know, maybe kind of moderately made uh, both audiences happy, but didn't really make either super happy, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, so with this new design manager, we knew we needed to swing more towards developers. We knew we needed to kind of enable some of this uh, functionality that allowed them to kind of scale their development efforts uh, above and beyond what the previous version did. Um, and that was really the impetus for kind of rebuilding a lot of the design manager. Uh, so when we started rebuilding it, we kind of looked at a lot of modern IDEs that were out in the marketplace um, and uh, we knew we wanted to build kind of a lot of that type of functionality back in JobSpot and make it a really modern experience for developers uh, to to build on. So, um, so naturally, we we kind of took a lot of that experience uh, from you know kind of self-contained modules to uh, all of that type of stuff and and kind of built it into into HubSpot. And we retained all of the existing like stuff that folks at least said that they loved about the existing design manager, the drag and drop, and um, you know all of that type of stuff. So. Uh, so we hope people like it. But, uh, yeah. but I, I mean, I can tell you, our our <laughs> developers are like the the. It kind of sucked because we had all everything built for the previous one. So then there's like a lot of changes to get things up and running with the new one. But like, it has streamlined things so much, okay. and like we've we've been able to cut cost and like development costs because all these like just stupid things that are time consuming and save up like the folders and so like just so much like tiny little things that have a world of a difference. Like you're cutting hours out of a workflow. Exactly. Uh, it was just so, it's such a smart, smart move. Um, talk, talk a little bit about the modules thing. So like, um, so we're obviously we're really active in the HubSpot marketplace. And um, one of the things that we've been really excited about for a while was just being able to not only produce templates that people can access, um, and use we have free ones we have paid ones but like the idea of custom modules that we can create too sure. um, because we all we get a ton of requests all the time about like hey you know I love your template but I wish it did something different and I'm like well I could scope it out for you if you want but um, <laughs> it's not it's gonna be very like expensive for you it's like not worth it so right. yeah uh, talk a little bit about that I think yeah yeah I'm happy to so I uh, Everyone at this point, or virtually every marketer at this point, at least that I talk to, is familiar with WordPress and certainly familiar with kind of like the plugin ecosystem within WordPress. Um, and while we hear a lot of like positive 
uh, things about that that ecosystem and and just the ability to like grab a plugin and kind of instantly uh, add it to your site. We hear a lot of kind of downsides as well, uh, updating plugins and security issues and. Uh, when the when you do actually update the plugin, the fact that it may break your site and like all these types of things. So we knew we wanted to fundamentally solve the issue of like making a site more extensible for a marketer, uh, so that they didn't, if they wanted like a calculator widget or or any sort of widget that they wanted to add to their website, uh, they didn't necessarily have to hire a developer or go find a developer every time that they wanted to do that. Um, it also makes uh, our partner agencies like like you more efficient, and uh, and we hope it kind of streamlines your work a little bit uh, to work on you know really the projects that have value for for those clients, whether it's a full website redesign or a branding project or or whatever the case may be. Um, so the modules were were kind of a solution for that, really. Uh, so a marketer could go to the marketplace, um, and right now there's kind of a, only a limited set. We're we're still. We're still kind of seeding some of the some of the modules there, and and some partners have certainly started submitting modules as well. But um, yeah. right now, right now the, the the choices are relatively small. But over the next few months, we're we're planning to significantly grow that number and get a lot of variety of modules in there. So that's awesome. Um, um, pretty yeah, exciting. Like, yeah, the, the I think the modules are really cool. Um, it's a good way. So I don't know. I like to do, we're a big fan of free stuff. Like I, I hate having to pay for things. I hate paid <laughs> plugins. And so we, we've, we've submitted a number of free modules and I, I, another partner reached out to me and was like, I've got like 15 ready to go. We're going to go high dollar. And I'm like, well, I just submitted five for free. And they were like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm You're just kidding me. Yeah, I'm not trying to undercut you. I'm just trying to be helpful to people and you know, it'll come back to me some way just because we're being helpful. So and that's all that really matters. Like what are right. you gonna make forty five dollars off of a module? Like what are you gonna do? Right. Yeah. I think the real play, Jeffrey, is like when you can get into modules that come with some kind of cool subscription thing, like that's gonna be pretty sweet. Um and then like all this new API stuff that's coming out, like yeah. my mind is like all over that. I don't know what to do with it. Were you involved in that stuff? Um, a little bit, uh, a, a tiny little bit. I don't. I get deep into everything to do with the marketing hub, but not everything yeah. to do with the entire like developer experience. Yeah. Um, so as you probably know, I know I know you know um, Luke Summerfields. Yeah. Uh, we just brought over to the product team. That's cool. Um, uh, and he, Luke's Luke's a great guy. Can't can't say enough good things about him, but. Um, uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be like really kind of looking to grow that community and really kind of represent a lot of those APIs and talking with developers and helping them build on HubSpot. So super yeah. excited to see what he does in the rest of the year. Um, uh, but, uh, but, but we hope that, um, we see a lot of great things out of, out of him and out of the yeah. community as well. That's funny. I like, I, I, so I am not a developer. I just happen to own a development company. <laughs> um, I know mean, I started doing like WordPress sites and that's what I was doing. And, you know, you know, I'd sell you a cheap WordPress site and we do content yeah. and branding and stuff. And that's where we got started in 2010, 2011. And um, so like when it, then I just hired people who are way smarter than me, who I could train to an ex a certain level. And then like you go and be really smart about this specific thing. Yeah. And so that's how we've, that's how we've grown. Um, and like, so all this API stuff is so far over my head. And so I'm like, I had meetings with the developers and I was like, just tell me what the hell it means. And <laughs> if you tell me what it means, I can problem solve my way out of like making something awesome and legit with it. I just don't know what it means. So I'm okay. supposed to solve problems. You can't solve problems. So I don't know what it does and the capability of it. Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way. I, I, I tell, I tell a lot of our product managers and engineers, I'm just, just, just tell me what that means. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like the line items API. Like, right. I have no clue what that, <laughs> what the capabilities are with that, but they were excited about it at Partner Day when they showed. Good. So. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, about? Oh, go ahead. Jumping back to to the modules and design manager real quick. Uh, I think I think those updates are like super awesome. I'm really excited about those from a development perspective. Yeah. I think one of the things though that that um, maybe hasn't been totally clear is uh, that comes along with this like, not quite yet, but, but it's something we're working on is this like drag and drop experience for marketers, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're all familiar at this point with Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and kind of all these, um, I would say kind of lower end CMSs. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think to a large extent, 
even the, the CMS market has evolved around ease of use, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, with Project Gutenberg for WordPress and uh, all these other CMSs that I just mentioned, we've seen the CMS market drastically shift solely towards ease of use, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're not blind. Like, we totally recognize that. Uh, so our, our, our goal really is to get that level of like usability for a marketer so that they really never have to go into design manager in the first place. Yeah. Uh, so they can like do all of their edits. They can change the layout of a page. They can, you know, do whatever they need to do uh, at the page level. And all of that, that foundation essentially is set up for them by a designer or developer. Yeah. That's, so that's so like, smart. That's really, really where we're getting to. It's way, way beneficial from my perspective because we have, anytime I have to bring the developers in to do something, it's considerably increasing the fee. And a lot of the times, you know, like I, we do, we do a fair amount of big website projects on HubSpot, but we do it just a shit ton of small website projects and large inbound retainers. Yeah. And so, and that's great. Like that oftentimes that's all people need. Like you don't need a super flashy, fancy, crazy functional website. You just need something that you can tell the story the right way. And so like if we can, you know, we'll use some of our templates or we'll use assets that we have and we'll build a really small site that's beautiful and aesthetic. Um, but once it starts getting custom requests or, hey, we need to move stuff around and I got to bring developers in, it can just jack up the fee and make things, it can, it can cause a relationship to go south pretty quickly. So from an agency perspective, I actually really like the idea of having the ability for just the account managers or the inbound strategists just, I mean, they're building landing pages anyway. Like they could just get in and move stuff around. Like I'm gonna drag this module over here on the page editor. Um, and then if they break something, they have to talk to the developers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's cross our fingers that they, that they don't break anything. But, yeah. uh, but you're the content content expert, so uh, so hopefully they're they're uh, you know creating the page on the fly and um, yeah. you know, make it look beautiful at the same time. It also makes it, I think, way easier to do like things like A/B testing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's pretty powerful. I think that's um, it's something that we would like to do more of in the agency. Yeah. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit. When I was at Partner Day, I went to one of the sessions. Um, uh, the machine learning session with the gentleman yeah. who's leading that for you guys. Yeah, and Hector. To, yes, and he talked about um, what's the the new version of A/B testing. It's not on HubSpot yet, but they talked about maybe bringing that in at some point. Do you know much about that? Uh, was it multi arm bandit? Yes, multi arm bandit. Yeah. Is that something that might be coming to HubSpot down the road? Uh, we are actively exploring it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put it that way. So A/B testing is is great. Like A/B test, we actually just yesterday um, rolled out A/B testing for website pages as well to, to, to everybody. Um, uh, and when I say everybody, I really mean a marketing hub professional enterprise. Um, yep. um, uh, so that's really, really exciting. I know a lot of partners, a lot of uh, direct customers for a long time have been asking for A-B testing on website pages. So yeah. So happy it's finally here. Mm -hmm. But A-B testing, just by its very name, only allows you to test kind of two elements. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty static test, right? Like you test, um, maybe a, a headline on a page or an image or, or, or something on a page mm -hmm. uh, and you get the results from that. And then maybe you test something different on the page kind of the next time. Mm -hmm. multi arm Bandit allows you to test multiple things at once. Um, uh, which really is like a more beneficial model because ultimately, um, with an AB test, you don't know if. Uh, you know if like that individual change made a difference, but you don't know if the collection of changes is really kind of positive yeah. uh, as a net net result. Mm -hmm. um, so multi arm bandit really like solves for that, and so it's something we're actively exploring, and we really want to bring bring it into the platform. Yeah, um, but we want to do it in a way that uh, you know, frankly, just a marketer can like spin up and use as easy as they do like an AP currently in the platform. Yeah. Right? Um, it shouldn't be this complicated set of process or, or anything like that. So Yeah, I like that. I, well, number one, I love the idea that we have A-B testing. We, we did some A-B testing already on our homepage and just okay. we actually did two completely different versions of the homepage and let it, you know, test that out. Um, I would like to see the analytics a little bit stronger for it because it looks for the most part like we're basically tracking submissions and things like that. But I really wanted to know more about click through rates and uh, time on page. It shows me bounce rate, which was great, but um, most of like we, it wasn't really um, a form page. So there's not, you know, 
there's not really specifics of that. So I don't know, maybe that'll come at some point, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. How are you measuring this, the success of that AB test? Is it, is it just like through bounce rate and views and time on page and stuff like that? Or pretty much was like time on page and bounce rate. Um, okay. And to be completely transparent, we actually, so we completely redid our blog page okay. um, instead of it being just a standard blog page. It's, multiple feeds of different blogs and then we have um, almost like like the next web kind of style where you categorize at the bottom all these different topics and uh, yep. the latest posts showing up so we have this really interesting kind of blog layout and I um, I was curious what happens if that information gets fed to people at the very beginning of their experience with web canopy studio should they come in through the home page so we tested that out um, it was I mean it was served about the same amount of time the bounce rate was about the same um, and the time on page was a little bit longer for the traditional homepage. Mm -hmm. um, but I, at the end of the day, like, I don't know how many people click through to the blogs and I don't know how many people, you know, clicked all the CTAs unless I went in to measure the specific CTAs, which yeah. we could, but. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. That's good. It would be cool just to see like click through rate. Like what's the, uh, how many people are clicking to different, specific pages or something yeah almost like a heat mapping to or it sounds like at least what you're saying is come yeah. almost like a heat mapping type of thing like what what are the kind of most common uh, or maybe i should say most popular links people are clicking yeah no we, i mean we could have done it with third-party stuff but it's if it was for a client i probably would have allocated resources to do it but it's just us and everybody's got 500 <laughs> things going on and we're not we're, we're not the size of some of the other diamond partners that have tons of resources which will be someday but <laughs> yeah if I, if I use any resources we allocate to us, it's like, stop what you're doing and then come over to help me <laughs> if I need help. <laughs> right. I, uh, I hear that from a lot of, a lot of partners. So I don't yeah. think, you're, I don't think you're alone there. Yeah. It's, it's a common thing. It's okay. Um, <laughs> we're good. We'll get there. Absolutely. Um, I was going to ask you about, Oh, site search. Yeah. Why, the hell, why, why the hell take so long to get site search? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question, John. And, and uh, honestly, yeah, if, if I if I had a dollar for every time somebody said, that. I know, I get it all the time from clients too. <laughs> uh, so no, in, in all seriousness, um, uh, because we had we had two choices when we built Site Search. One was build it on the old design manager um, wow. and kind of like the old code base, essentially, um, or two build it on the new code base and the new design manager. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you kind of like frame it like that, that the choice I think is, is probably pretty easy to make. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but the problem with that was we, we built site search. Uh, we technically had it ready for a, for a little while actually. Uh, but, um, we were still kind of in progress of finalizing some of the design manager. And so we couldn't roll out site search because of the dependency of the new design manager. Um, and, uh, that was really kind of the, the long tail is we needed design manager to, to essentially be out there to as many people as possible, um, to, to really roll out site search. So mm -hmm. I know it took longer than, than, uh, we all probably would have liked, certainly than, than I would have liked, but I'm, I'm happy it's out there now. Yeah. Um, we, we used, um, we were using some other third party tools to accomplish it beforehand and it worked well. We figured out a system with it. So I'm super stoked that we have it now because it's, um, it's just been kind of a pain in the ass and then it's extra, it's extra dev time that we have to spend getting it set up. So it's, it is extra revenue for us. But when, um, when, you know, some clients are very adamant about like, I need a site search. It's a part of the requirement that the team has, has declared as like, this is what we have to have on our site. Right. So when I have to allocate, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars to just this one line item compared to other platforms, um, it was kind of a, it was kind of a loose situation for us, but exactly. exactly. And I'm glad I'm happy. I'm very happy that it's there. Yeah. Yeah. We're happy it's there too. I mean, we, we've seen some like industry level data that shows page engagement is of course better with site search on there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's a natural win for a lot of marketers, right? Like mm -hmm. ultimately you want to attract these people to, to your site, to your page, to your content um, and keep them on that page. And, um, you know, kind of to perform whatever the next action yeah. is. Uh, and uh, a lot of folks will get frustrated. Um, yeah. If they, you know, can't immediately find what they're looking for. So uh, search is kind of the natural, 
natural thing, I should say, that people uh, have become accustomed to in the age of Google and uh, oh, yeah. search engines. So mm -hmm. uh, having it there is, is, is great. Uh, and, you know, given it's free, you can't, can't beat that cost. No, you can't beat it. <laughs> I, uh, uh, we've, so and if any other agencies watch this, like I have had some pretty decent success um, by having like the, the dev staff reach out to previous clients um, you know, ones that we might not be doing inbound with, but maybe we built a website for and they, they couldn't have site search and just like introduce, reintroducing us and being like, Hey, you know, there's new features out on HubSpot. It'd be good for you guys to, to know about what's available. I'd be happy to chat sometime about that if you're interested. Um, just to kind of like let them know, because unless they're paying attention to product updates and things, which a lot of people don't, um, yeah. they're just, they just log in and see that, you know, the dashboard's different today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's a good way to like open up relationships again. So there's another one, uh, maybe we can, we'll wrap up here soon, but we talk about like social media. There's another client that's really, really heavy into social scheduling, oh, cool. um, and talking to them about like, you know, what a pain in the ass it was to, uh, just go through and schedule Facebook messages for the week or Facebook posts for the week. And now we can bulk import. Um, you want, you want to talk a little bit about that one maybe? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, our, our product manager for social, uh, Daria, um, went through kind of a demo of this at, at Partner Day. Uh, and I think, I think she described it pretty well where she was like, hey, I, I, I need to schedule my social. I know what I want to post, um, but uh, I need to do it in the next like 20 minutes because like, I, I don't have a ton of time. Um, and, and if you had to do it manually, uh, you and I both know it would certainly take longer than, than 20 yeah. minutes. So uh, she kind of walked through the process of, of bulk upload and, uh, and it's great. Like, right. It works across all the networks supported by HubSpot. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, you can just uh, upload posts directly in for the entire week or whatever uh, kind of time frame you want. Um, and then, uh, instantly schedule them from there. You get a link preview of what that actually, what that like tweet or what that Facebook post actually looks like, which is, uh, which is definitely new. Um, so we want to make sure that you see like an accurate representation of what that uh, tweet, for example, would, would look like um, uh, before you actually schedule it. And then uh, one of the things we have uh, in alpha right now is a calendar for social. So mm, after you, that's cool. I'll upload everything. You can uh, maybe like you maybe you accidentally keyed in a wrong date, or maybe you scheduled ten things for uh, May thirtieth and nothing for the thirty first, or whatever the case may be. Like we all, you know, make silly little mistakes like that sometimes. Um, uh, but you can kind of see a over, overview of your calendar of social, and you can drag and drop posts around to. Uh, uh, to maybe cover those days that you missed or, or just spread out your content a little bit more. So yeah, we're, we're trying to make it easier for really all the marketers to, uh, have that presence on social. Uh, we hope bulk, bulk upload this calendar and a bunch of other features are, are helping do that. But, um, uh, but yeah, it's an important area where we're investing quite a bit in. We have a lot coming. That's awesome. I think the bulk upload is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Um, well, I mean, Jeffrey, I mean, I think our time's running out soon, so I don't want to make you... What are you doing in Portsmouth today? You said you were visiting Portsmouth. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, so I uh, I know you know about it, uh, but but certainly a, a lot of folks I, I speak with uh, do not. Mm -hmm. um, we're not trying to hide it. It's on our website and everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but... Um, uh, but yeah, it's, this office is a lot closer to my house. It's, it's probably about 15 minutes or, or so from my oh, house. Oh, cool. Uh, so I try to work from here at least a day or two uh, a week. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it certainly makes the commute easier. Um, and there are a bunch of folks up here as, as well that I kind of interface with on a day-to-day -day basis, which uh, makes, makes my work life uh, kind of easier as well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and in today's kind of nature of work uh, with remote work and, and meetings like this uh, and, and being able to just chat like over Zoom and, and other technology, it makes it super easy that <laughs> so location doesn't really matter so much anymore. Um, uh, I love being in person in meetings uh, when I have to, but, uh, but hey, this is, this is really convenient and yeah. really good technology. So. Portsmouth, uh, that office is on the water, isn't it? It is, it's right on the water. We have uh, the the bridge over to Kittery, Maine, right outside this this office. Um, in fact, one of the 
uh, one of the Navy's ships just came through the USS Manchester to be commissioned. So that so they're like a lot of, uh, uh, we call a, a lot of the office call themselves port spotters. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so a lot of the, the port spotters kind of went out and, and saw the, the Navy ship. It was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. That's awesome. Uh, That's but, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really, a really neat office. What is uh, Dublin? Their dub spot? Yeah, exactly. Dub spot. What about the other? So now there's, uh, there's Singapore is sing spot. Tokyo is, uh, uh, probably not the best name, but, but toke spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of others. Sydney, uh, Sydney is Sid Spot. Um, they just announced a new one opening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Columbia, Bogota, yeah, Columbia. Bogota. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what that's going to be. <laughs> uh, I, we need to come up with a creative name for that. Yeah. Not Berlin, but I don't know if they have a nickname. Um, or if they do, I don't know what it is. Not yet. It's not uh, been. <laughs> well, cool, man. Um, well, Jeffrey, thanks for grabbing coffee today. Um, we'll stay in touch and, uh, I'll let you know when this is coming out and, and shoot you a link so you can share it if, if it's share worthy for you. Awesome. Thanks, John. All right. We'll see you, buddy. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.